Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Lawrence Welk Show, celebrating more than 50 years on television. Now sit back and enjoy the show selected especially for public television. Hello, everyone. I'm Mary Lou Metzger, your host for this Lawrence Welk Show. This program, Academy Awards, originated in 1971 on ABC, and it's so great that we can present it to you right here on public television. Highlights of this program include Norma Zimmer and Jimmy Roberts teaming up to sing Three Coins in the Fountain. Sandy and Sally sing Burt Backrack's Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, and just wait to see who the special guest superstar is. Later in our program, we will visit with the talented singer, Tanya Welk Roberts, and hear her fascinating stories when she was featured every week on the Lawrence Welk television show. But right now, here's the maestro himself, Mr. Lawrence Welk. Greetings, my friends, and a warm welcome. This evening, we salute Hollywood's annual Academy Awards, and we're honored to present a very, very special guest one of Hollywood's most distinguished citizens, the one and only Jack Benny. We'll meet Jack later in the program. Now on with our Academy Award show. I need you 
winning songs from the past and two young people who are always winners, our wonderful young husband and wife team, Guy and Rolno. The 1960 award winner, Never on Sunday, was the title song of a movie about Greece. Just to give you, um, or to give it an international flavor, it will be played by our happy Norwegian Myron Florn with the help of our Escondido Brass. Simmer and her popular singing partner Jimmy Roberts bring you uh, another Oscar winner. Three coins in the fountain, each one seeking happiness. Hearts 
peace in the fountain, each heart longing for its home. There they lie in the fountain, somewhere in the heart of Rome. Which one will the fountain bless? Which one will the fountain bless? They shine. Just one wish will be granted. One heart will wear a valentine. Make it mine. Make it mine. Make it mine. Make it mine. Very, very nice, Norma and Jimmy. And that song won the award in 54. The background music of the picture Love Story is a strong contender as the best original score of a movie. Here we have Bobby and Sissy dancing to Bob Ralston's recording arrangement of the Love Story theme. <laughs> Music, beautiful dancing. Thank you, Bob Ralston, Bobby, and Sissy. No matter what the conditions, there are two charming girls we can always count on to brighten things up on our show. Of course, I'm speaking of uh, Sandy and Sally, 
And uh, here they come. Raindrops keep falling on my head. And just like the guy whose feet are too big for his bed, nothing seems to fit. Those raindrops are falling on my head. They keep falling. So I just did me some talking to the sun. And I said I didn't like the way he got things done. Slipping on the job. Those raindrops are falling on my head. They keep falling. But there's one thing I know. The blues they send to meet me. They won't defeat me. It won't be long till happiness steps up to greet me. For several years, we've been trying to get the next gentleman to be a guest on our show. But the matter of union jurisdiction has always been something of a problem. You see, the actress union claims he's a musician, and the musician's union insists he's an actor. Well, why don't we let you folks judge for yourself? And here he is, our good friend, uh, Jack Benny. enough. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I must say I'm very happy to be here this evening on the Lawrence Welk Show so that I can return a great favor that Mr. Welk did for me by appearing on one of my specials. This was quite a while ago. You see, he came on my show for nothing. <laughs> Is that funny? And now I'm on his show for nothing. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. You see, the reason we came on each other's show for nothing is we had a reciprocal agreement. Reciprocal meaning Lawrence Welk is just as cheap as I am. <laughs> Now this particular show has to do with music of all the Academy uh, Award contenders. Even though I personally have never won an Oscar for the movies that I have made. I made movies years ago, you know, and I never won an Oscar. But there's no bitterness because many great stars have never won an Oscar. Uh, Chaplin never won it, neither did Greta Garbo. So I'm in pretty good company, wouldn't you say? Huh? Wouldn't you say I'm in good company? But there's a reason. 
Now, I'll tell you the reason I never won an Oscar. You see, I tried uh, so hard to be meticulous. Every time I made a picture, I tried, I wanted to, I tried to be a perfectionist, you see. And I did everything to try to win an Academy Award. And then I found out they never, very seldom, or they never give it to comedians or comedy pictures. It, the only way you can win an award, you've got to do a picture that has absolutely no laughs in it at all. My last one darn near made it. I, don't think I, I can tell you. Now, funny thing, when I asked Lawrence, Lawrence Welk, to be on my show, he was very reluctant. And I said, why? And he said, well, Jack, you know the way I work. I don't have your delivery, your timing, your enunciation. So I said, Lawrence, that's ridiculous. I'll show you how easy it is to deliver lines correctly. I said, now repeat after me. I made him do it about 10 times. I said, repeat after me. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. He only did it once, and he almost got Rex Harrison's part in My Fair Lady. Imagine. But you know, Mr. Welk's career and mine are very similar. Now, Lawrence was born on a farm in North Dakota, and he had to quit school and help his father. Now, what I'm telling you now is the true story. And by coincidence, I was born in Waukegan, Illinois, and I had to quit school uh, in the seventh grade. I was seventh grade and I had to quit. So I could help my father, who had a clothing store. But Lawrence Welk and I both wanted to be in show business. Now, we didn't know each other then, of course. So his father, Lawrence Welk's father, sold, him a, co sold a cow and bought him an accordion. That's how he got in it. Now, my father, wait a minute. Wait, I'm not through yet. My father sold a blue double-breasted suit and a violin so I could go in show business. The only difference is my father sold the suit and the violin to me. <laughs> I had to pay my own father. In fact, my dad didn't even fix the sleeves on the suit. On the suit that is, the violin doesn't have sleeves, you know. <laughs> now, the first time I ever heard Lawrence Welk, I was playing in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and lived at the William Penn Hotel. Now, I was going into the dining room when I saw a sign that read, it says, Lawrence Welk and his champagne music. So I went in thinking, naturally, the sign meant that they were going to give away free champagne. Wouldn't you think that? <laughs> Turn out, not only that I have to pay for the champagne, but I got drunk from the bubbles. <laughs> Just imagine. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do now. I think this being a musical show, I think it's only proper that for me to play a violin solo and to be accompanied by, thank you, by Lawrence Welk and his orchestra. I'm going to prove that I'm a violin. May I have a... Jack, a, uh, just a second. Before we play anything at all, I want to thank you very, very much for being on my show. Well, you're welcome, Rex. I mean, Lawrence. <laughs> you see how, see how he fooled me? Uh, can I have a violin here? Thank you. Is this a first or a second violin? Which is my third. Huh? My third. <laughs> they come. You know what? I'm going to play something I never play. That's my own theme song, Love and Bloom. I never play it because I hate it. I hate that number, Love and Bloom. It has nothing to do with a comedian, you know. Can it be the trees that fill the breeze? <laughs> Could I have A, please? <laughs> A 
that's fine. <laughs> this is fun, isn't it? <laughs> all right, now I'm gonna play. Already? Give me a, give me something. Give me an andante. <laughs> Wait a minute. I gave a concert last week in Jacksonville, Florida. And, you know, when I give concerts, they're for charity. You know, they're benefits. I do them for nothing, you know. Honest! <laughs> so, and they charge. I have to take a note. They charge, when I give a concert, these benefits, they charge from $2 to $100 a ticket. Only in my concerts, the $2 seats are in front. <laughs> the further back you go, it's $3. Yeah. All right? Boom. It's a real Stradivarius violin, you know, it's written in there. It says, Antonio Stradivari, area code 213. <laughs> remember when Jack Benny made this special appearance on our show. It was a great moment to cherish. Coming up later, Tanya sings For All We Know, and we'll have a medley of Academy Award-winning Disney songs. And a reminder that we'll be visiting with Tanya Welk Roberts at the end of the show. Now, back to our Academy Awards salute. In the history of the Academy Awards, there have been many wonderful songs nominated. Naturally, they couldn't all be winners. We'd like to recall some of these past contenders, starting with this 1965 song. Ken Dillo sings it for you. They say there's a tree in the forest, a tree that will give you a sign. Come along with me to the sweetheart tree. Come and carve your name next to mine. They say if you kiss the right sweetheart, the one you've been waiting for. of white will burst into sight and your love will be true evermore they say if you kiss the right sweetheart the one you
Heart Trio by our friend Henry Mancini, one of many nominations for this great composer. In 67, the song, Georgie Girl, looked like a pretty good bet to win an Oscar. Well, we still like it, and here's our recording arrangement. Tune. Here's another fine song, one of last year's nominees, Rod McCune's great combination of words and music, Gene. Listen to uh, Clay Hart's rendition. Gene, Gene, roses are red, all of the leaves have gone. And the clouds are slow You can touch them and so Come out to the meadow, Jean Jean, Jean You're young and alive Come out of your half-dream dream And run if you will to the top of the hill Open your arms, funny Jean Till the sheep in the valley Come home my way Till the stars fall around me And find me alone When the sun comes a-singing I'll still be waiting Oh, my Jean, oh, Jean, roses are red, all the leaves have gone green, and the hills are aflame with the moon's yellow haze. Come into my arms, funny Jean. Till the sheep in the valley come home my way Till the stars fall around me and find me alone When the sun comes a-singing, I'll still be waiting for my Jean Jean, rose 
roses are red All of the leaves have gone green And the hills are ablaze With the moon's yellow haze Come into my arms, funny Jean Come into my arms My bunny Jean. Folks, my daughter-in-law, Tanya, has a pretty song she thinks has a good chance to win. And it just might, for all we know, and that's the title of the song. Tanya, I sure love the way you sang that song, and I really dig that Peking arrangement. Folks, I'd like to do a little routine to the very first song that won an Academy Award, The Continental. But just to make sure you don't mistake me for Fred Astaire, I'd like to point out, he's a little older, a little shorter, and he dances a different style. Now that I've got that cleared up, boys, how about a downbeat?
Arthur, Fred Astaire would be proud of you. While we're saluting the Academy Awards, we'd also like to pay tribute to the man who won more of these Oscars than anyone in Hollywood, the late Walt Disney. Here's a medley of winners from Disney's movies. Let's start with America's Sweetheart of Song, lovely Norma Simmer. Worth 
Thank you so much for joining us for our Salute to the Academy Awards. Our special guest star is a talented and beautiful singer and a close-up's best friend. Please welcome Tanya Welk Roberts. Hi, Tanya. Hi. <laughs> so glad you're here. Now tell me the truth. Is it true when you were a little girl you didn't play house? I played mansion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We were very poor. I don't know where I got it from. But what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a movie star. Always? Uh-huh. Yeah, and they were, you know, they were just starting TV then. And I, I, I don't know where I got it, but I just loved it. But I didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start star. singing? I started singing at three at my... Uh, uncle's uh, restaurant in downtown Los Angeles. He owned Little Joe's famous Italian restaurant. And my parents would go there, and I was like three years old, and they put me on the table. And I would sing, and just, you know, early dinner, of course, when the cocktails start coming in, they took me out. But uh, that's where I did it. Now, your father was a singer. He was on Capitol Records, and my mother didn't want to go through all that, you know, being married to a singer or a movie star because he wouldn't be home. So he went into the poultry business. <laughs> Talk about changing hats. How fabulous. Did you ever get to sing with your dad? Yes. In fact, uh, when I was in first grade, we had a um, talent show at, at the grammar school, and I sang this song called Daddy Dear. And uh, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Now, on this show, we heard a medley of Disney songs. Mm -hmm. You have quite a history with Disney. Yes, when I was uh, close to 15 years old, I was a contract player there. So how long were you with Disney? Well, I was doing that till I was 17, and then they gave me a band at Disneyland called Tanya and the Mustangs. Weren't Sandy and Sally in Disneyland? They were at, uh, and I didn't even know them then. They were in Carnation, no. They were in the Golden Horseshoe, and the Carpenters were in the Carnation Center. You know, that Main On Street? On Main Street, sure. Yeah. There were a lot of people that started at Disneyland, but we didn't really know each other. We'd just, you know, wave hello, and I just knew her by Karen, the singer over there. So how did you get from Disneyland to the Lawrence Welk Show? Well, I was also doing uh, demos for A&M Records, and I... I was with a and Records, but not on contract, just doing their demos, and then MGM Records signed me, and I did a song called You're Telling Me Lies, and my mother knew Lawrence's um, a fan club president, Mary Lee Schaefer, sure. and she sent it to her, and then, and then he, she sent it to him, and then he called my parents and said I'd like to see her, and I just really didn't want to do it because I had a rock band, and, I had visions of, you know, going on the road with the Beatles and, there, and everything else. And uh, so my mom said, no, you have to go, you have to go. So we went to the Palladium, and we went backstage, and it was a break, and all these guys were running around, and it was noisy and horrible, and he goes, I want you to sing for me. And I said, no, I can't do that here with no music. And my, I thought my parents were going to kill me. And I told him that I had a sore throat and I just couldn't do it. And so he called that Monday and he said, this time, come down to the office. And I did. And I brought my Nelson Riddle, uh, sing along with Nelson Riddle record. And I sang, you make me feel so young. And he said, well, we're having, I was replacing, I was the first one to replace the lemons. They were still there though, but they were leaving. So I did the New Year's show in 67. And then I started in 68 right after that and he hired me right on I mean right there on TV so you didn't have to guess three or four times before no it was it was you know and then I thought well I don't know this is television <laughs> bye Disney <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I started over there so in addition to being part of the musical family mm -hmm. you also became part of Lawrence Welk's personal family yes uh, Larry started hanging around the studio and well he hung out with all of us Sandy and Sally and uh, well I guess you you came out a couple of years a after. little later yeah. yeah and we were just all really good friends and before you know it we were engaged and married what was it like being the daughter-in-law of Lawrence Welk well that was a little rough because uh, you know I was I was really looked at more carefully and I kind of uh, 
had to do what he said, and and it was good. And then I fought it. But now I look back, and he was absolutely right on. You had um, some pretty funny experiences with lyrics on the show. Yeah, like I couldn't remember them. <laughs> <laughs> Brain dead. No. I remember a couple come to mind. Uh, Over the Rainbow and Matchmaker. Oh, Matchmaker. Well, you know, do you remember that everybody would get dressed fast? Oh, yeah. Ahead of time to come, out, to come out to see me sing the song because we weren't allowed uh, cue cards. And I remember, I mean, I can just see Sandy standing there and, and you and everybody right behind the cameras and I was doing matchmaker. Well, <laughs> I would start the, start the song and then all of a sudden I'd go into my blank. And, and now if you really look at those shows, you could see in my eyes when I went that way. And I was literally saying, matchmaker, matchmaker, throw me a line, make it real fun. <laughs> but you always rhymed. rhymed. I, I rhymed and I was like talking to you guys, help me. <laughs> but, I, but I got through. But you I did got it. through. You did it better than anyone I've ever seen. Now when you left the show, you went on the road with your own act. Yes. I had uh, two singers and dancers and a pretty big band. And that was really fun. I did fair dates and I did Fairmont hotels all over. And um, it, was, it was a new experience because it was just a little more jazz. And the show was, uh, I had 12 costume changes. And it was, it was really hard. And you know, was it, fun? it was really fun, but the Lawrence Welk show was really a blast. And you know, sometimes when you're there, you don't know it. And it's only, you know, looking back now saying, what a job. It was the <laughs> best job in the whole world. Well, after you and Larry divorced, years later, you had an amazing experience. You reconnected with your childhood sweetheart. Yes. I, uh, he, I fell in love with him on the kickball field when I was in fifth grade. And we were just like best friends. And then in junior high, we were boyfriend and girlfriend. And all through high school. And then uh, he went off to Vietnam, and I went on to my career, and didn't see him for a million years. And uh, we saw each other for about three seconds and just went, oh, <laughs> so here we are. We've been married 26 years. Wow. Yeah. I've known him my whole life. We have an amazing family, too. You've raised five children. Five children. And they're all great. Uh, can I brag? Of course. Well, my oldest son, Lawrence Welk III, is uh, CBS pilot reporter. He's won two Emmys. He's also KCAL, and he also does Fox's um, Craziest Chases or something like that. And he does a lot of overdubbing for commercials. And then Kevin runs the uh, Welk Music Group, and that's he's he he alone has made it really fabulous <laughs> in the last few years. And uh, Kimberly, my husband's daughter, who we had since she was three years old. Um, She's an international marketing whatever. She's lived in Italy for three years, and Spain, and Japan. And uh, right now, she's in uh, Alaska at this famous resort where people come in from all over the world, and she speaks four languages. And so she's really happy over there. And then Nicholas, our baby, um, has two restaurants in Venice, California. And he's in the paper all the time. He's fabulous. And see, it really paid off making my boys cook in my kitchen. And, and he's, he's really great. And baby Kenny um, just graduated from college and is working for his oldest brother, Lawrence Welk III, in uh, the news. He's, he's learning camera and speaking and flying. So how is it to be a young grandma? Oh, that's you great. have some grandchildren, We've got too. five kids, and that's only with two. So I can't wait. We're going to have some more. But it is the best. It is the best, best, best. I, I just, I have so much fun. In fact, I had Maddie go with me on my birthday, and we, that's my oldest granddaughter, Maddie Welk, and we went to the movies, we went out to lunch, we went shopping, and I called, uh, I think, it, I don't know, it was Gail or Sally or one of the girls, and I, and I said, you won't believe I'm having my birthday with a nine-year-old, and I'm having a blast. <laughs> and that was just, it was just thrilling. It was really great. Thanks so much. Thank you. And thank you for sharing your evening with us. Until next time, as Lawrence always said, keep a song in your heart.
providing.